Hi, welcome to Baked Basement Banter with Debbie Friedman, the director and choreographer of Reefer Madness. And I'm Allie, and I'm the producer. And we are also the co-founders of Contact Theater. Uh, we founded it uh, in 2018, uh, and this will be our fourth, uh, fourth musical that we are producing. Third to ever make it to a live audience, unfortunately, because of, you know, the reason. Uh, but we are super excited. Yeah, and we just wanted to, like, take this opportunity when we're thinking about how to market this show. It's a little, little off the beaten path, a little different. It talks about some some content that some people may find more risque and we thought the best way to approach that was to just kind of feature all the incredible talent that we have on the show and talk a little bit about them as artists them as people who have opinions also on marijuana of their own that they brought into our production which is really valuable and just kind of get to know people better that's really what we wanted to do that's what we really think our theater offers as well you know we wanted to start a company that would push the boundaries of musical theater and really have people questioning what they expect when they come especially to see independent musical theater in montreal and this show definitely does that so we're really really excited to bring it to life we invited uh different members of our cast and our crew who are partaking in the series to come at different levels of sober, uh, because if I had a glass of wine here, no one would think twice about it. Um, so why is it different for maybe some other substances that this show explores? So that's for us to know and you to guess or just who cares. We're gonna have fun. We're super excited for the series. We'll be releasing videos in a cadence uh, every couple days uh, until we run out. And we're really excited to have you all here to get to know us uh, a little bit about us. And we're gonna start with, with us because that just seemed the most logical when yeah. we were planning this series. Yeah. So when we were choosing the show, obviously uh, it's very different from our last show. For those uh, who don't know, our last show uh, was next to normal. So boundary pushing, but in a, in a different direction. So why, why the show? Why now? Why is it still relevant? Yeah, I mean, this is something that I grappled with because I have loved this show for a long time. I think Reefer Madness is just like, a brilliant piece of musical theater at its core like the music is amazing the messaging is great it's a show within a show which like I'm always a sucker for and I think a lot of theater kids are um and especially I always had this kind of idea of really leaning into that in order to get out the satire which is something we're doing with this production um but yeah it was definitely it's definitely a shift from next to normal uh, it's definitely a little bit of a mood change uh I mean coming out of the pandemic for me First of all, Next to Normal was a show that we'd actually planned to do before. So coming out of the pandemic for me, it was like the perfect show to come out of it because it was like we were still grappling with a lot of darkness, still dealing with a lot of things. And I really wanted to lean into that. Whereas we were thinking about where we wanted to go next, what we wanted to show the world, how we want our company to develop, the kind of art we want to present. I, of course, started thinking about this show again um, because I do think it's such a it's such a funny show first of all we knew we wanted to do something lighter I knew I wanted to bring some humor in but it's also at its core actually like a very deeply political show a show that talks about um, obviously marijuana but also a lot of things in society that I think are really important for us to keep talking about and keep thinking about as we emerge from the pandemic and as things kind of shift back to whatever this new normal we're living in are um, so yeah, I, I really love Reefer because it has this kind of political edge to it. We're going into what's going to be another interesting American year pre-election and like the rhetoric and the propaganda, in my opinion, <laughs> that's going to come out around that. And weed even now is a consistent topic, not just in Canada where it's technically been legalized, but there's still a lot of activists doing a lot of great work to try and keep, not just keep it legal, but push what legalization means to make it more accessible, to make it fair for the people who have been growing it for years. And of course, to look seriously at the people that are still in jail for offenses that are related mostly just to marijuana. So that's something that I think is really, really important about this show is, is the timing of it in this political climate. That's something that I really want to explore. And then I think this is a really good opportunity to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we talked a lot about the themes of just using fear and how regardless of the subject that you choose it's still just such a powerful to tool that will be used continuously it seems in our lifetime for just a variety of different topics that don't seem to sit with what this elite bubble of of people who who control our lives basically want yeah yeah i think it's it's definitely about that it's definitely about challenging the norms 
continuing to kind of push against boundaries. And I mean, for you too, I know that like this was an exciting show in that it would be challenging to market in some ways, but I think it also like pushes us in a new direction in terms of what we're producing and the kinds of work we're doing, which is great. Yeah. I mean, I think what, you know, it's been interesting to kind of figure out what camp we want to be in and like, okay, what, you know, this is, this is our show and like it or not, this is, this is what we want to do. And this is the kind of company that we want to be. And come see our show because it's it's gonna be a lot of fun and yeah. and I hope that that's enough and I and I know it will be and we have such a talented cast and it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah. you know diving into the show itself because y- you are effectively directing a show mm-hmm. within a show so mm-hmm. you are directing people that then need to present themselves as, as other characters and it's such a complex system it seems I mean how do you approach it yeah I mean for me when we decided to do the show I really knew that like I really wanted to pull out that satire using the show within the show structure um, and this is something that gets done in, in theater in musical theater even a lot um Drazi Chaperone is a really interesting example of that like it's a it's a great show within a show structure that also like kind of makes fun of show business by being a show within a show and this is making fun of propaganda by being a show within a show so the idea the kind of premise that we have is that the lecturer, who's a character actually that um, we're going to be interviewing later on in this series, <laughs> but yeah, the, the lecturer who who is a character that consistently reoccurs is also actually the one who directed this kind of like community slash high school slash like young person's theater <laughs> company in we've decided kind of like middle of nowhere small town America, um, suburbia, hardcore suburbia. Um, and so it's like very interesting to kind of be approaching that idea of this is the show that they're trying to do, but we're actually creating obviously a very different show. We're working with me as a director and the actors all like playing their actors, playing their roles, which is like a level that like definitely has sent us all through a trip. We've, we've actually been jokingly calling them their actors. So they have their like actor characters that are kind of their people that are playing the character and the way that that person influences the character is what's been so much freaking fun to figure out with this cast because they're just like so talented and they all come with such good ideas and it's just like this really like fun creative melding so that's been like a really great opportunity that this show has offered of like leaning into the satire yes and that's what ultimately I'm trying to do I'm trying to kind of take apart the lies that it's built on by like having those lies literally fall apart just saying this couch is a big, big part of that, um, <laughs> yeah. for example. Um, so there's certain things within our show that don't necessarily go smoothly because of how that production is working. But us, as a show, we know everything that's going to happen and we're really prepared for everything. So that's been like a challenge to figure out because we all have to kind of get on the same page, not only about what's actually going to happen, but to a certain extent about what was supposed to happen is what I say a lot. Like there's what's supposed to happen and then there's what actually happens. And our actors and our our designers, who are amazing also, like, have to kind of track both of those things along with me. Um, But luckily, we have an incredible production team. Yeah. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) We have an incredible production team. They're amazing. Um, We're super, super blessed. We have an incredible stage management team. We have you and Ty, which, like, save our lives on a regular (laughs) basis, especially with this idea. Um, But, yeah, I think think it's going to be really, really meaningful and really, really fun and make people laugh a lot. That's really what I want to do yeah. at, at the core. I think that that's the biggest difference between what our show does versus what, you know, the anti-marijuana propaganda show within the show is trying to do. That's supposed to scare us. And we're kind of taking that fear and we're literally turning it into jokes and like kind of making fun of the ways in which that fear has been kind of capitalized upon and used by propaganda and by these like at their core, really racist, misogynistic, bullshit laws that existed yeah. in the 30s um, that, you know, we're still working to undo. And we think we're way past that. But the reality is the societal norms and things that have fled into our society are are there very much so. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely not something that's just totally normalized still. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, you know, obviously being within this community and I guess just being a performer or, or a theater professional in general reputation is is such a big part of of your life and what you are always thinking about sort of in the back of your head and then you know when it comes to the themes of the show and and really marijuana uses in general it's maybe legal especially well here in Canada and some other parts of the world but it's not the same as like you know 
uh, oh, let's have a glass of wine together. You know, my theaters, many theaters have bars that they'll serve you alcohol before the show. And yet, you know, oh, let me pop outside and have a joint or, or, or whatnot. People look at you and they're like, oh, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely a thing. I mean, I think it's something that we all think about whenever we're doing something like this. But I also kind of decided that like when we decided as a company that we were doing the show, I was just be- going to become a weed advocate, which like on some <laughs> level I always have been, but I just really, I just embrace that future for me. And to be clear, like being a weed advocate does not mean I'm going out and like peer pressuring people into smoking weed who aren't interested in marijuana does not mean like I'm an educator and that's obviously like a thing that's part of my reputation, what I think about as well. And I would never like encourage underage people to smoke weed any more than I would encourage underage kids to drink. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me. In that context in particular, it's very odd because a lot of schools will still have a lot of stigma around marijuana use and even like teachers showing any sign that they are possibly marijuana users. Like I wouldn't bring this mug with me to work uh, at a a school. However, I've definitely seen lots of paraphernalia around, you know, people having little cocktail earrings, people having little cocktail mugs. Like that's a very normalized thing in our society, but there's definitely still a really strong stigma against marijuana usage, um, which I find kind of odd because I've definitely personally in my personal life experience which is different for everyone experienced a lot more like violence and like kind of not great behaviors from people when they're drinking alcohol versus when they're smoking weed um so for me and also like the medical uses of marijuana are something that I've seen work really well for a lot of people even people that were kind of anti-marijuana in the past especially with things like CBD and CBG and like all the different options that exist now depending on what part of the plant you want to use Um, there's definitely still a stigmatization around it. It's definitely something I still have to think about, but I've also kind of embraced that this is the show I'm doing. This is the statement I'm making about the kind of art I want to make and about the kind of art I want our company to make. So yeah. What's it been like for you though? Because you work in a very different (laughs) world. Like you work in in corporate more. So like, does that ever cross your mind? Is that something you're ever worried about? You know, I think I was actually thinking about this a lot today as uh, we were coming into this filming process and thinking about what I wanted to say and, and I sort of came to the realization that like I'm a little bit more blessed in the sense that my professional life is very separate from the life that I've created within Contact. Um, you know, I obviously talk about it and I like always have my colleagues when I come to your shows, like whatnot, but in terms of the atmosphere that people look at you, you know, my business life is very LinkedIn heavy. Like I don't have anyone on Instagram or Facebook or where we would ever cross paths. And um, I know, you know, background checks exist. And yeah. if this, you're watching this one day because you're deciding if you want to hire me or not, I hope you do. Cause I'm great. <laughs> I, I second that you should hire her. You should definitely hire her. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, like, like you said, we made a decision to have this show and, and this is part of that decision. Yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, and again, like, there's all sorts of different levels of engagement with marijuana use within our production team, within our cast. Like, not everyone is super pro-weed. Some people are just very pro-musical theater or pro-satire or anti, you know, capitalism or, you know, there's there's a lot of things that I think people can latch onto in this show beyond marijuana. I think that's the other important thing for me about this show and why I connect to it so deeply. At its core, I think this really is a show that's about the kind of really messed up structures that built the policies and that built the laws in America in this time. And that's what it's critiquing. And it's kind of useful to keep critiquing because, you know, the show was written in the nineties. So it was also written in a different time and was talking about different things at that time and poking fun at different moments. But I think, you know, with the past, with the past 10 years or so (laughs) of politics, I think it's just as an adept message now to really like go against propaganda and point out like, what is the truth? You know, the, the finale is, is a song called the truth. And it's, to me, really, the, the thesis of the show ultimately is about that, is about, like, what do we consider the truth? How are things presented to us that maybe prey on our fear, that prey on our own insecurities or on the societal things that have, you know, forced us into a certain way of thinking in many ways? And how much can we question that? And how much can we use things like musical theater and shows like this to do that? We think a lot about our audience through this production for me at least that's sort of the message that I want them to take home is that like what are you being told you should be afraid of and look the other way yeah Yeah, for sure I think I think that that's that's exactly what we want them to do like we want them to reflect on what they're being told to be afraid of and also like 
think about what they actually want and like start to reflect on that a little bit more. Yeah. I'm hoping that that's kind of like the, the subtext of this show. Yeah. And uh, to laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah, the show, mean, the show makes you laugh a lot. Again, I looked at it earlier. That's really what it's yeah, like. Yeah, we're you're getting like, into gonna, a very serious conversation. But like, the show is but, like, hilarious. You're gonna come, you're gonna and then see the show crazy. and be like, oh my goodness, this is the zaniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you if you watch this and it makes you reflect a little bit more, then that's then that's, that's great too. That's great yeah. too. And we love that. And uh, we're really excited. Uh, we're about two months into the process now, and it's been going super. I mean, we're two months into the process with actors. We're like. Yeah, eight months into the production process, process itself, yeah. um, but we're really excited uh, to continue creating and seeing what the show is going to turn into with such a talented cast and a talented wow. production team, uh, many of whom you will meet throughout this video series, so uh, we hope you stick around, we hope you come see the show in uh, April at the Mainline Theater. Uh, if you follow us across our channels on Facebook, Instagram, website, uh, you will find information about the show and when tickets are going to be on sale. And uh, we hope to see you there. Thanks yeah. for watching. Come 420 with the Cats of Reefer Madness. Yeah. Yeah, that's recording. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're so funny. I love them so much. <laughs>